This video is a quick refresh on epigenetics for those that do not know, followed by two new studies which falsify evolution for good. Epigenetics is a fairly new branch of science that deals with genetics and genes and how they function. This is the idea that while the structure of your DNA doesn't change, parts of it can be turned on and off through chemical switches in your body that regulate genes, and it has a lot to do with your behavior and lifestyle. So for example, smoking or eating too much can make the genes for obesity in your body express themselves strongly. Psychological trauma and highly stressful events can affect the genes that control the brain's receptor for oxytocin, which is for love and trust. People that sleep poorly for just one week can show changes in 700 genes. Now the good news is that the opposite is also true, so leading a healthy life can allow your body to turn on healthy genes. You can also reverse hereditary defects as well. Research with rats and mice have shown that when they're placed in a maze, whatever they learn about that specific maze, from their own experience, they then in turn pass that on to their offspring. Your DNA carries the memory of your parents' ancestry. Fear and anxiety are part of this, which you can inherit from your ancestors. This memory is carried in our genes. This is called genetic memory. If you experience significant trauma in your life, this can be passed on without us ever knowing it. Your epigenes influence the expression and carry these memories on from generation to generation, and they can change. But they do not evolve, they just change the way they're expressed. The sweet smell of fruit usually attracts rats. However, when they took the sweet-smelling fruits and added electrical shock, whenever the rats smelled it, the rats quickly became afraid. Along the way, extra neurons sprouted in their noses, making them super sensitive to the smell. They were obviously scared of the shock, but associated it with smell. This, however, was passed on from generation to generation to their descendants, who were also afraid of the smell of fruit, and had the same extra neurons as their fathers. But how could they have inherited something that was never learned? Every cell in the body is constantly translating DNA into protein needed to carry out vital processes. But these chemical switches attached to the DNA can be turned on or off, these switches, called epigenetic tags, are why a kidney cell looks and acts a lot different than a nerve cell or a skin cell, even though they have identical DNA. We don't know exactly which genes are turned on and off, but we do know what happens in one key set of cells, sperm cells. That is why it gets inherited from generation to generation, and all rat descendants in that lineage will be scared of the scent of fruit. But this isn't just in rodents, as I said, it's in humans as well. Descendants of people who survived the Holocaust have different stress profiles than the rest of us, predisposing them to anxiety disorders. This was discovered by epigeneticist Rachel Yehuda. In Ivaklavik, Sweden, boys that suffered through harsh winter famines went on to have super healthy sons with extremely low rates of heart disease and diabetes, and their kids have the exact same excellent health living an unbelievably 32 years longer on average than the grandsons of boys who had not gone hungry, proving that these gene switches can get turned on and off and passed on from generation after generation. The expression is controlled by what we do, proving that it's nurture over nature, and two, proving that they are not beneficial mutations which science has been telling the public for years, and three, since epigenetic switches don't change the gene at all, rather just how it's expressed, it is more of a problem for evolutionary theory which is losing the small dwindling handful of what they previously thought were beneficial mutations day by day. Now that you have an understanding of epigenetics, we can now get into the new study, which exposes evolution for the fraud that it truly is. Evolution has been falsified once and for all because of epigenetics. A long undertaking was done by evolutionary scientists to determine if the most primitive life on Earth can evolve through mutations by environmental changes. So the scientists went to the Grand Prismatic Springs in Yellowstone to the hot, sulfur-rich waters where the most primordial life on Earth live. 
they gathered up all the life in the springs and obtained a total of three different independent lineages from the same bacteria. They took them back to the lab and tried to prove that they could evolve these bacteria through beneficial mutations. All three bacteria strains went through 120 generations, and the results concluded that the only evolution that occurred was adaptation through epigenetic means. Not a single beneficial mutation caused a new function, nor a new gene to arise, nor anatomical feature to appear. Now remember, for evolution to be true, it needs thousands of beneficial mutations and thousands of new genes to arise. None of that happened, even on a small level. One strain produced zero mutations, while another produced 141 point mutations, none of which helped the bacteria live in their new environment. One of the evolutionists working on the study, Dr. Paul Blum, put it this way, The surprise is that it's in these relatively primitive organisms which we know to be ancient. Not bias there. We've been thinking about this as something evolutionarily new, but epigenetics is not a newcomer to the planet. Of course it's not new to organisms on the planet. Complex mechanisms don't evolve. They were designed and have been in us since the start. This is why, to their dismay, they had to concede. We predicted that they'd be mutated, and we'd follow the mutations, and that would teach us what caused the extreme acid resistance. But that is not what we found. Evolution through beneficial mutation is falsified with observable, testable, repeatable evidence. It gets better. University of Michigan biologists Dr. Chen and Dr. Zhang looked at the effect of changing environments on the evolution of laboratory yeast. They grew 12 replicate cultures of a pure yeast strain separately for 1,200 generations in each of five different challenging environments. First was in the presence of a carcinogenic dye named Congo Red. Then it was moved into the presence of copper ion. Then, it was placed in a slightly alkaline environment at a pH of 8. Then, it was placed in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. And finally, it was placed in the presence of a strong antibiotic called neomycin. They also grew these replicate cultures successively for 224 generations of peace in each of these five different conditions. Meaning, they grew the first 224 generations in condition 1 with the red dye then the next 224 generations in condition 2, and so on through all five different environments, totaling 1,120 generations. At the end, the yeast cultures that had been rotated through all five environments 
had significantly fewer net mutations than the sum of all those that had come and gone during the course of the experiment. Both scientists concluded that beneficial mutations can be undercounted in changing environments, both in nature and in the lab. This proves nurture over nature yet again, validating epigenetic regulation over mutation. This experiment confirms many previous ones showing that loss of function and degradation of function are the type of mutations that dominate in laboratory evolution experiments worldwide. Also notice that the yeast tested here are eukaryotes, while the E. coli in Linsky's lab are prokaryotes. Yet, trying to adapt to their environment, both of them throw out genes left and right, proving de-evolution is not confined to a particular branch of life, it is universal. Thinking ahead, the investigators first pre-adapted the parent yeast strain to the initial growth conditions and then challenged the yeast with changes to its environment. A common argument made by those defending evolution in regards to degradation of E. coli genes lost in Linsky's experiment, that the benign growth of conditions allowed the bacteria to sacrifice genes easily does not apply here. The scientists concluded that whenever breaking or degrading a gene will have a net benefit, it will be selected. They discovered the adaptive degradative mutations show up very rapidly within a few hundred generations. This is unalterable. It is the reason why degradative mutations appear so quickly. This is because the speed in which certain genes can be broken is much greater than the speed at which a specific constructive mutation in a given gene can occur, perhaps a hundred to a thousand times faster. That's right, genes break far more often and far faster than they are ever constructed. Dr. John Sanford's genetic interview model is proven. The scientists admit that all of the beneficial mutations are most certainly a loss of degradation of function. That is, the mutation in the various conditions benefited the yeast only by destroying pre-existing genes or diminishing their activity. Things adapt, and these adaptations are mostly epigenetic regulations. Once again, genetic entropy is validated in validating Darwinian evolution and proving biblical creation.